All right, problem 13. Let f be a function defined for all real numbers x. If f prime of x equals negative x squared plus 6x minus 5, then f is increasing on the interval, and we have some choices of open intervals down here. Okay, this idea of an increasing function, f is increasing, means that it's sloping upwards. So that means that we have to have something that's sloping upwards in some way, shape, or form. Doesn't need to be as steep as this, it could be much steeper. But this means that we have our derivative, f prime of x, must be positive if it's sloping upward, greater than zero. And they gave us f prime of x, so we are already one step of the way down the road to finding this. So the easiest way probably to find this instead of doing all sorts of things is let's factor this, figure out where it's zero since a quadratic like this will be continuous, it will only change signs where we get zeros and then we can figure out which side of it will give me positive numbers, give me the increasing part of the function. So we'll start by factoring. We know that f prime of x is equal to, and I'll start, I'll take out a negative sign. I don't like factoring things if they have a negative on the leading coefficient, so I'll just take out and factor out a negative, and that'll give me a positive x squared minus 6x plus 5. And now I look at this, this is easily factorable. If you don't see it right away, you can work your way to it, but this x squared minus 6x plus 5 factors as x minus 1 times x minus 5. You can see we have x times x will give me the x squared. Negative 5x minus 1x gives me the negative 6x, and negative 1 times negative 5 gives me 5. And from here, I can find my zeros of this, so this itself means that f prime of x equals zero when either x minus one equals zero, our zero product property, or x minus five equals zero. So either if if our f prime is zero here, then one of these two values must equal zero, and so we get x equals one or five. So now we have a few choices to figure out where it's positive, but I know that if I look at the graph of this function, we're going to get a zero at one, Or, and we're going to get a 0 at 5. Now probably the easiest way for me to see this is I can just look at this function. I see I have a negative leading coefficient, so I know that my parabola has to be opening downward, and I can see it right away from that. This is not necessarily the greatest sketch of a parabola, but it gets the idea across so that I can see that when I am in this domain, when I'm in this interval between 1 and 5, my derivative is above the x-axis, that means that's positive, and that means that f has to be increasing. And when I'm over here less than 1, or over here greater than 5, I can see that I'm below the x-axis, meaning that my derivative is negative. And you could also have seen that if you just plugged in some numbers. So if I put in 0 to both of these, I get a negative 1 times a negative 5, and a negative out there, so I would see that over here it's negative. If I put in some number in here, let's just say 3. 3 minus 1 is 2. 3 minus 5 is negative 2. I get a negative 4 times a negative, which means I have to have a positive sign in here. 
And when I go out beyond here, so let's see, that's 5. If I put in 6, I get 6 minus 1 is 5. 6 minus 5 is 1. 1 times 5 is positive. I have this negative out in front, so it has to be negative there as well. So either graphically or analytically, you can see that in this case, the interval 1, 5 is where it's positive, so it's where the graph is increasing. So my answer is 